Welcome back everyone. So we're back with the 1000 HX and uh, I have to say we are just about done with this little project. Um, so the final piece came in the mail today. This is my CF to IDE adapter. Um, I've been waiting for this thing forever. I actually found out that the one I initially ordered was shipping from China and it wouldn't be in here until May, so I ordered another one and, uh, well, it finally arrived. And this is it. So we have to um, rig this up so that it plugs into this card. Hopefully it's the right one. Um. <laughs> All right. Step one, uh, we need to remove this back plane cover uh, from the the new, uh, of course, that screwdriver. It doesn't fit anything, um, but this one does. Then we need to make some changes to the power connector. And I think what we have to do is remove two pins and then straighten the other two out. So let me just confirm which pins those are, and then we'll get it going. All right, so the two pins that are closest to the to the IDE connector right here, those are the ones that are going to be uh, cut or removed. But first, we need to slide out this plastic um, connector boot. All right, so we got that uh, connector boot off and straightened out the pins, and we desoldered the old, um, or the unused pins and we're going to now put this onto the board. Now we are going to set the jumper to master and uh, that should be all we have to do. So I'm going to put my camera down and do my best to line these things up so that they work in a kumbayotic fashion. Now it'll be easier to remove this, uh, this cover so we're going to do that real fast. Unscrew these. We don't have to remove it completely, we're just going to loosen it up. Normally when you build this, you're going to have the um, all the parts handy. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have this CF adapter, so... I'm getting that power... Those power oh, there we go. We're all lined up. This floppy disk um, that I actually ordered for an additional five bucks with the adapter or with the uh, kit um, contains Setup HX, which is something I also have other copies of. So, okay. So, at this point, we need to do this. We need to. Um, We need to change the computer to boot from a floppy disk. So we're going to change it to, um, let's see, there we go. Alright, so now we're going, to, oh wow, that's totally out of focus. There we go. <laughs> That's new. Um, seize the uh, drive. All right. I've got DOS 3.3 on this diskette. Let's see if we can get it to boot from a floppy. There it goes. So this up here, this is part of that ROM that we programmed. It adds the ability to change the boot device from a floppy disk. So we booted from drive A successfully. Now let's run F-disk. F-disk was the um, 
it was included in DOS 3.3. This is actually IBM PC DOS, by the way. Let's display partition information. And uh, found, yeah, it sees it. Okay. Let's see, create, delete, delete, extended. Oh, there's nothing there. Escape to return to options. So let's do a create partition, create primary. Yes, make it active. System will restart. And it's going to try to boot from drive C, but it can't because obviously. So we have to quickly hit A to change it to drive A. See how that works? All right. F6, COM detect, and F8 is ROM boot. So, you, so when this menu pops up for that brief second, you just make sure you press either A, C, F6, or F8, so you'll have a boot device um, that works for you. Okay, one wing, all right. Format C colon slash S. Now, I don't recall what the partition limit is on DOS 3.3, but we're going to find out. That's a 256 megabyte drive. Let's see what it does. It's formatting it. Let's see what happens. This could take a while. Uh, I, the, the largest partition I've ever seen in DOS 3.3 was... Um, no, wait, it will work because... I formatted a 500 megabyte hard drive once with DOS 3.3. Never had a problem, so it'll be okay. It's fat. I think it's fat 16, so it should be fine. Uh, sees it as 174 megabytes, I believe. You should see it. Command com is in there, and here we go. Ready? This will be the first time this machine's ever booted up from a hard drive. I'm excited. Control, Alt, Delete. Let's see what we got. Okay, it sees my master sand disk drive. And it won't boot from it. It doesn't like it. But it sees it. Huh. Maybe there's something I did wrong. It sees the drive though. All right, let's, uh, let's change it to boot from A. There we go. I thought for sure that would, that would do it. Um, it's not doing it. Maybe it has to be DOS 5. That could always be the case. May need to be DOS uh, MS DOS 5. I'm trying it with DOS 3 because that's what I have. You know, run with your brun, right? I have DOS 5, but not in the f in the yeah. It, the drive is working, um, so that's something. All right. Let's see if there's any funky utilities here. In drive A on that disk. Let's see what we got. Yeah, this has. Uh, it looks like it. Oh wait, let's um let's boot it from the from drive A for a sec. Control delete. That might have all the DOS 5 stuff we actually need on it, so let's 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 give that a try. Oh, gotta hit it, hit it fast, there we go. My DOS 3.3 probably wasn't such a great idea. We're getting somewhere. We're almost there. I mean, can you actually see the screen? Yeah, you can, just a little bit. Let's zoom in a little more. I've never set one of these up before, not like this, um, well, at all. <laughs> yeah, DOS 5. So let's do an F-disk again. And we're going to go ahead and uh, do this one more time. Display partition info. Ah, yes. We still have that non-DOS partition, that's why it's not working. So let's delete that. Delete partition. 
delete non-DOS partition. That's what happened. That's why it wasn't working. Um, that's okay. That's fine. We're, we're, we're in good shape. Delete partition. Yeah, the, the older version of FDIS doesn't give you that function. Now we have it. It's DOS 5. DOS 5 rules. Okay, we're going to create a logical partition. Create a primary. I'm only going to do one partition. I don't see any reason to do more than one. Just do it all in one shot. Yes, I want to make it active. Okay. Drive A. That was our cats, by the way. They come better in pairs. When you have one cat, it's no fun. You, you want to have fun to get two cats because, um, seriously, a lot more fun. More cats, more fun. The thing is, they play together, you know? They interact with each other. Format, I can't believe I'm typing format C on my Tandy 1000. Uh, HX. Let's uh, do format C again. Yeah, that's what it was. It had a non-DOS partition, and that was throwing it. I guarantee you that's what it was. And DOS 3.3 doesn't let me delete those partitions, so. Formatting 244 megabytes. Yeah. DOS 5 or better. Definitely DOS 5 or better. Don't use DOS 3. DOS 3 is great if you're doing a, you know, a, a, a IBM PC XT or something. Um, you know that's that's where this is uh, this comes into play. But we're gonna let that format. Think it's gonna take a little while, and then we're going to start loading this sucker up. I can't wait. I have a copy of Windows 2.0 that I might throw on it. Um, I have to get myself set up with a serial mouse. I think I've got one down in the basement. I, I can put on this. Um, but with only 640k, you know that's not a lot of memory, and. I don't want to load it up with junk either, so. Yeah, really limited by the system RAM, which is, and there's no virtual memory in these. There's no, uh, nothing like that. So, we're gonna have to live with what we have, right? In case you were wondering, the hard drive activity light does work. It's on the back there. Can you see it? Where am I looking? Oh, yeah, there we go. Now what's even cooler is there's a mouse driver, I believe, on that diskette as well. So that mouse driver, we can just spin that right up and we'll have um, a driver for the, uh, for the serial mouse. Format complete. Come on, give me the data, give me the deets. Come on, you can do it. Might take a minute. It's probably tabulating all the bad clusters that aren't there. All right, I don't need a label. Let's see what she does. So we're gonna try to boot her from the internal drive, control, alt, del, and here we go. It said booting okay, but it's not booting. Oh, it just keeps infinite looping here. All right, I uh, I tried something. I figured it couldn't hurt. What could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Here's what I did. I did F disk MBR. F disk space slash MBR. What that does is it writes a new master boot record onto drive C. Here we go. See what's gonna happen. Okay, we get the boot menu. Booting, ooh, ooh! Look at that! It worked! It freaking worked! All right, let's go to drive A. Now, I um, I also did another F disk and a format at the same time. And let's go ahead and run the setup, or the install command, which will add a few common Drivers, a few, few, few minor things, DOS Max, and a, I think a mouse driver, and and all that had me crap. Um, what I really want to do, that's a, a UMBS 
driver as well. So that drive C, do another. Now I can't edit the auto exit bat file because there's no editor um, here, so. Alright. Now, now what I want to do, uh, this this is something that bothers me. It seems like the, it takes a while for it to report back the drive the drive size. I would imagine that if you cut your partitions into smaller chunks, it might not take so much uh, time to report back. But um, now that we've got all the drivers loaded, let's do a three finger salute. The Alt key is in a weird location on the uh, 1000HX EX keyboard. It's really bizarre. Okay, there's all our drivers loaded. That's interesting. Huh. Microsoft mouse not found. Well, obviously there's no mouse. All right. I'm gonna make a directory. I wanna see if you can run deskmate from our makeshift hard drive. Let's see what happens. There's my deskmate disk. Takes forever for it to report back. I wonder why that is. All right. Are we in deskmate? Yeah. Copy A. C. And we're gonna copy all that. So right now we're bypassing the DOS 2.11 in ROM that is not currently uh, doing anything for us. Uh, we're running it straight off of the CF card. Um, it's booting a higher version of DOS than this machine ever thought it would ever run. And uh, let's see what happens. Now Deskmate, this particular version of Deskmate was released specifically for a computer that never intended to run a hard drive, let alone DOS 5. So it'd be interesting to see if it even runs. Um, you cannot run this version of Deskmate on any other machine other than a 1000HX. It is, it is the most peculiar piece of software. It's personal Deskmate 2.0, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, it will not run in anything else. But will it run on a modified 1000HX with a virtual hard drive? Yes, it will. And that loaded quite fast. Um, that was really fast. Let's see how long it takes to load Art Paint, my little house, or the house I drove. Drove the house I created. Oh my. My, you're a fast little bugger. Damn, that's cool. It really worked. It really, really worked. I'm gonna grab a, uh, I have a serial mouse that I wanna try. Let's exit this program. This is so cool. I could just shut the damn thing off. It doesn't matter. Where there's no heads to park because we're using a, a solid state disc essentially. Um, so let's shut her down. Let me grab a, um, a serial mouse. All right. We got a mouse systems serial mouse hooked up. Now we'll get to test out the the nine pin serial port that I produced myself and see if it detects the driver. Mouse. mouse driver installed. You know what that means? That means I I actually did it right. I built the the uh, US, USB. I built the serial interface correctly. So let's see if that. I'm gonna set by. I'm gonna set deskmate as a path, so I can just type desk from from the C prompt, and uh, I'll be able to just launch it however I wish. So. Desk make desk. Let's see if it works with this mouse. No bueno. No, it doesn't work. 
unfortunately. So Deskmate is designed to be used with Tandy's own mouse. Well, that blows and sucks at the same time, but that's life. Uh, so we can't use our, our, um, our mouse with this program. That's fine, I can live with that. Um, it's, all, it's all good. Um, let's see, what else do we want to do? So what I want to do, the print shop. I have a copy of the print shop that I can install. I'm going to just start loading all of my programs onto this machine. And I think that, um, yeah, very few of these uh, old pieces of software were designed to use a mouse. One exception being the print shop. So the print shop, I think it's on, uh, I need the program disk. And we'll get out of quit, let me quit desk mate here. Unless there's a way I can get it to, uh, here we go, mouse. Ah, uh, here we go, serial mouse. Com one. Ooh, we might actually be okay. we we might be able to use the mouse. So here we go. I'm gonna quit that right now. Launch it again. Oh my God, we have a mouse. Look at that! Look at that! That is so freaking cool. You have no idea how cool this is. All these years. All these years, all I've ever wanted to do was to use a mouse with this freaking program. And here we are, we can use it with a mouse. That is so freaking awesome. But it turns out it does work with a, with a, uh, a serial mouse. Who knew, right? Um, so, to, here we go, double click. Now I should be able to draw anything I want without restriction. Oh, look at that. I made a donut, and I'm gonna color in my donut. Oh, that doesn't work. Let's see, can I change the color? No, that's wild. So, the way this program works is these color, this color palette doesn't change the color of what you're trying to draw, which is wild. So, folks. The card I built works 100%. The RAM works, the CF to IDE adapter card works, which means that the IDE interface works, which means that everything, yeah, the serial port works, RS-232C port, I mean, um, all's well. This is awesome. I'm freaking fantastically happy with this. This is so cool. Um, Finally, this computer, after 30 years, will actually be useful for something. Um, I mean, really, it wasn't very useful um, when I was growing up because we couldn't afford a printer, we couldn't afford memory. We, we you know, it was it was too expensive. My parents had other financial priorities, and this computer was not one of them. But. Because I am such a preservationist, I kept it around, hoping that someday I'll do something useful with it, and here we are. Um, we're going to set this up using the installer. This is uh, the print shop, our disk, default C. It's going to take a minute. It's going to report back. Did I already press enter? I think I did. Let's give it a, give it a second. It's probably searching for drive C. There it goes. Guys, this is so cool. I'm so happy. If you have a 1000 HX or EX, you've got to get this card. Um, the information is in my previous video. I might put a link to it. Um, it is so worth the money. It is so worth it. If, if you're... Now, I'm actually thinking about... Um, Converting my um, my compact to oops, to a CF card, but I really don't want to because the original drive still works fine, and I've made repairs to that drive. Um, 
But there is a case to be made for these CF to IDE um, adapters and of course using a CF card as a hard drive is certainly nothing new. But um, in a case like this Tandy 1000, there is no hard drive that I could buy that would be able to run off of its meager power supply and fit inside that interface, um, the expansion bay. It just wouldn't be practical. I could probably, you know, I could stuff a laptop drive in there if I really wanted to, but I think I'm happy with this solution overall. I think this is the best solution uh, moving forward because these CF cards have a good long lifespan and they're not very expensive. Um, but I could have put a bigger drive, I could have gotten a, a much larger CF card, uh, but I stuck with a 256 because that's way more space than I'll ever need first of all, and um, let's see how the print shop loads. Nice, very nice, very nice. So we have mouse interface support. That's all working fine. Yep, that works, that works, everything's good. Nice. So. All right, thank you for uh, for joining in and watching the action. Um, my Tandy 1000 is finally uh, is finally um, useful for once. And um, as far as cost, I think the whole project was under a hundred bucks, um, maybe a little more. But uh, if you happen to have a CF card, you can save a few bucks by using the ones you've got and um, yeah this thing is so cool Oreo likes it anyway um, as far as mounting the card and, 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 and you know finally finishing up the job by uh, I'm not sure if I want to use screws but I'm gonna try to go to the I'm actually gonna run to the hardware store while they're still open and see if they have any plastic push rivets um, those are those are the solution I want to go with right now um, you just put them in and press the button in the middle and they expand um, and they're removable. So we're going to try to find some of those. Uh, other than that, we're done. Everything's good to go. Golden, golden, golden. All right. Thank you all for watching. Now, if you, uh, yeah, one more thing. Now, this diskette I bought from Rob Krenicky and... He was offering these for $5 pre-made. Um, he said he's low on disk stock or disk inventory, so you might not be able to buy these from him. A um, couple of things you can do. I've read a lot about um, modern day USB uh, floppy drives not working on, you know, working well with 720K diskettes. Here's where some people might get into a jam. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get yourself disk images for DOS 5 and you can then, if you have a vintage computer in your house, something from like pre-2005, something fairly old, and you have some 1.44 meg diskettes, what you've got to do, and I actually did that to a couple of disks over here. But you want to do this. You want to cover the hole that's opposite the right protect switch. Cover that hole. That's going to fool the drive into thinking it's a 720K diskette. And then what you want to do is format the disk with um, Windows. You can do it in Windows 95, 98, 2000, maybe even XP. But format it as a 720K diskette and it will work just fine. Now, as far as getting the image copied to the disk, you can use, and I have done this, you can use some of the older USB floppy drives. None of the new, the cheap Chinese ones that you get on eBay right now, probably not gonna work, but if you can get yourself an older one, an old, like an iOmega, or even a super disk drive, um, those are still, they're still out there. Um, you go ahead and use that drive with a modern day machine, you should still be able to 
extract that image to a diskette and it should work just fine. Um, but otherwise, that's the tricky part. For some folks, for me, it wasn't a problem. I have enough equipment. I can fill in the gaps. I can, I can go from modern to old pretty easily because I have tons of machines that are in between um, the, the, the generations. So I didn't have that problem, but some of you folks may have a problem. Um, I keep machines around that are you know, late 90s. I try to have at least one machine from each generation. So if I need to move files from one to the other and there's sometimes going from super old to modern doesn't always work. <laughs> um, and that's, that's a common thing. If you're into collecting vintage machines like this, um, the term bridge computer is something you might want to get familiar with because it is a thing and um, I know for Apple II collectors and early Mac collectors, you got to have something that it, that can that can talk to the new world and the old world seamlessly. Something to kind of go in between, if you know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, there we go. We're done, and I'm happier than I've ever been with this project. This is this this just came out so perfect. So. Uh, thank you all for your uh, <clears throat> for your for your viewership and your support. And uh, that pillow freaks me out <laughs> every time. I had that pillow. It was over there, and my and the the, the lovely lady in the pillow. <laughs> she she was actually house sitting for someone, and I, and she was so she wasn't home. I, I I walk into the living room and I look over, and I just jump for a second. I'm like. Wait, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Just that, for that moment, like, wait, you're not, what? What are you, <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, you're supposed to be, anyway. She got, a kick, she got a kick out of that story. But on the same, on the same token, she had one made of me. <laughs> and, and it's freaked her out, too. So, anyway. Hi, Oreo. Hey, buddy. Has he, how much has he grown since then? Does he even know that's him? Does he have any clue? Probably not. I don't think cats are self-aware like that. <laughs> he must have been under a year old when that was taken. 